In this tutorial, I'll review facing a part in a Mesa Troll 3 axis mill. Start by navigating to the program page. I already have a program started with the top line and WPC completed. I'll verify I'm in the right program, and select program edit to begin. As you can see, my part setup is a flat plate with an extra 25 thousandths on the top surface. I'm going to use a face mill to clean this surface off. My setup currently has this part in a vacuum fixture, so I don't have to worry about clamps when facing. Moving to the last line in my program I'll select face machining to add the new unit. The face milling selection contains several different processes commonly done on the face of the part. Activating the help screen for this selection will help illustrate the different settings. Face mill is a general purpose face milling routine. Top end mill is pretty much the same as face mill, with slightly more optimized tool paths. Step, is used for milling the top of a part with an end mill leaving a rise on the part. Pocket, is where all pocket milling on the surface of a part is done. Pocket mountain, is for milling a pocket that has islands within it that are not milled. Pocket valley, is for milling pockets that have a hole in them, mostly designed to eliminate too much air cutting in a pocket. Slot, is for milling a slot with a simple centerline definition. This type of shape could also be done with pocket but slot is a simpler definition. I will be doing a basic face mill operation. Depth, is the defined value of the finished face reference to the Z0 coordinate. In our case, this will be 0. Axis direction stock allowance, or stock removal, is the amount of rough stock to be removed by the facing tool. In our case, 25 thousandths. Bottom face roughness, tells the control how good of a surface to leave with a facing tool. By selecting one of these presets shown here, the control will automatically set a finish allowance in Z. Choosing a value higher than 3, will leave a finish allowance in Z automatically. If finish allowance in Z is left greater than 0, the control will automatically prompt you for both a rough and finish facing tool. Since my part is only 25 thousandths of stock to remove, I'll set my finish allowance Z to 0 so only one tool is necessary. In the tool development sequence, I first have to set a type of tool. Obviously, the only good selections would be an end mill or a face mill, so I'll stick with face mill. For nominal diameter, I'll select tool data window to see what face mills are set up in my tool magazine. As you can see, I have a 3 inch face mill already set up, so I'll highlight it, and click OK. This selects the tool, and automatically inserts its tool file code. Priorities, are best described in a separate tutorial, so I'll skip them for now. Approach point X and Y, is the point where the face mill will position at the initial Z value, set in the top line of the program, before plunging in Z for the cut. I pretty much always auto-set this. It is important to understand, this only controls where the tool plunges in Z. Since the Mazatrol computer controls the cutting tool path, all this setting does is modify where the tool plunges. It does not change the cutting tool path. I'll give you an example of that in a few minutes. Cutting direction, tells the control the type of tool path to use when cutting. The menu selections are pretty self-explanatory. X and Y bidirectional, plunges off the part, machines across and entirely off the part, before shifting up to mill back. Unidirectional, maintains the same cutting direction throughout the cut. The short and arc short selections cause the face mill to machine material while shifting up for the next path. For a good consistent cut, I'll choose X unidirectional. For depth of cut per pass, I'll choose auto set. Because the depth of cut in tool file for this tool is greater than the material to be removed, the control has chosen to do this cut in one pass. If you wish to force two shallower passes, you could change this depth per pass as desired. Selecting auto set for width of cut, has given me 2.1 inches. This can be adjusted as desired, up to the full width of the tool, but 2.1 looks good to me. When I select auto set for surface footage and feed rate, the control uses the chosen material in the top line of the program, and the material of the tool, when calculating. These are adjusted by the values in the cutting condition pages for a final setting. This setting will work fine, but you are free to change it if desired. Remember, the feed rate is feed per revolution total, not per tooth. Under the M column, I'll set an M8 in 1, 
To use flood coolant during the cut. The shape of the part to be cut can be defined as a square, a circle or an arbitrary shape with lines and arcs. Defining a round or arbitrary shape doesn't have much effect on the tool path, other than to possibly shorten some strokes. The path will still be straight lines in X. Since the part is a simple rectangle, I'll choose square. To define the square, all I need is two opposite corners of the shape. However, the tool path will be created based on which two corners I choose. I can control the type of tool path by defining the upper left or lower left corner first. I'll start with the upper left corner first, as minus 7.5 in X and positive 3 in Y. The opposite corner would then be positive 7.5 in X and negative 3 in Y. Corner chamfers aren't used in the facing operation so I'll leave them blank, and that's it. Selecting shape end, finishes the definition of the face mill shape. When I select the top line of the facing unit, the work being done by that unit is highlighted. I can then rotate and zoom within the graphic window, to see what is done to the part in that unit. To see the tool path, I'll put a temporary end unit in the program. Select program complete, and go to tool path to see the computed tool path. Path continue, runs the tool path. Selecting path erase, I can then use path step for a clearer view. Just to show you how approach points work, I'll go back to the program and change the approach point to 0 in X and 5 in Y. Running with these approach points in tool path, you can see the tool plunges where I asked it to, but then it machines over to the starting point it wanted anyway to start the cut. The only times I manually adjust the approach points would be special circumstances for maybe a pre-drilled hole or fixture. Going back to the program, I'll reset the approach points. Delete the end unit. And I'm ready to continue the program.